We have breaking news. Former Trump advisor Steve Bannon has been indicted by a federal grand jury. He is charged with two counts of failing to honor a subpoena from the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection. This is file tape you're looking at here. Bannon has refused to sit with lawmakers to testify about what he knew regarding the planning of the events leading to January 6th and the president's reaction to it. No arraignment date has been set. Let's go ahead and turn now to Jessica Levinson, CBS News legal contributor and Loyola Law School professor for more. Jessica, thanks very much for being with us. So break down these two contempt of Congress uh, counts for us. What exactly do they reference in this indictment? Uh, it's basically, Steve Bannon, you didn't show up and your documents didn't show up. And those are what the two counts are about. So one is you failed to come and testify. And two is you failed to turn over documents. And that's why we see those two different charges, because in a way, there are actually two different requests. We want to hear from you live and we want the information that you have in documentary form. So that's, again, the reason that we have these two counts. Jessica, you and I had talked about how it was very much an open question what the actual um, protocol or what, what would have actually taken place as a result of Steve Bannon and others um, close to former President Trump um, refusing to cooperate with the House Select Committee. What exactly would be the consequence of that? Now it appears we know. Um, tell us, is this something that has happened before for someone to actually be held in contempt of Congress in this way? This is extremely rare, and I believe our last example is from the Watergate era. And so if you think about contempt of Congress, and it's such a good question that you asked. We did talk about this. We did talk about other routes that you can take. We think to ourselves, why is this so rare? And if we have a moment to kind of zoom out for a second, it's so rare because typically in an, a congressional investigation, you don't have somebody to say, no, I'm not showing up. I'm not giving you the documents. Typically, there's something called a period of reconciliation or accommodation, where Congress will say, we're investigating this. I want you to come in and talk about these three topics, and I want you to bring documents for these four things. The person will say, I'm going to talk about these two topics, and you'll get documents for the, these three things instead. In this case, what we see from the last administration is a number of people just saying, basically, I dare you to. And this started happening when it came to the impeachment inquiries. And Congress really made, I think, a political decision that we're not going to refer this in those cases to the full Department of Justice because they'd put themselves on a clock because they said we have to keep going with, for instance, the impeachment proceedings. In this case, Congress made another decision. You know what? If you don't show up, if you don't work with us, then we're going to take this extraordinary step in our nation's history of first the committee voting to say we want to refer this to the Department of Justice, and then the full House voting to say, yes, we are referring this to the Department of Justice for a criminal uh, contempt. And then the Department of Justice, as it probably felt for a lot of people following this, like they really took their time. And now they're taking this fairly, in our nation's history, extraordinary step, not because the law shouldn't be used, but because typically the moment doesn't arise to use it. So as you were speaking, Jessica, I want to let our viewers know our CBS News White House team has asked for any kind of comment or reaction from the White House. An official tells our Weijia Jiang that they will not be commenting on the Bannon indictment. And Jessica, that leads me to Merrick Garland, the attorney general, and the position he found himself in. Give us some context on the decision uh, to move forward in this way. Um, was this as we said, one of several options, um, perhaps the only option that seemed to make sense given the gravity of what took place on January 6th. I, I think it is. And if I could actually respond to that no comment, I think the White House is doing something mm -hmm. very important in that no comment, which is they're showing that the Department of Justice making this decision to indict is independent of the president. And President Biden, frankly, I think it was maybe now a month ago, 
said something like, well, I hope they move forward or kind of gave a thumbs up for an indictment, you really want to show the American people that this is a Department of Justice that believes in the rule of law, that will go based on the facts and whether or not they apply to the law, not based on political pressure from the president. So I'm sure it feels strange for people to not hear from the president, but you do want that real division there. Now, you know, to your question about was there any choice, I think in this case, well, it took some time because the Department of Justice really did get their ducks in a row, as they should. These things don't move with the speed of a television program, like 23 minutes or 47 minutes. Um, yes, Steve Bannon was subpoenaed. It was a valid subpoena. There was a good reason for the subpoena. It's not congressional overreach, and he did not work with the committee. That is contempt of Congress. He didn't show up. He didn't give the documents. There is enough to go forward. And that's what Merrick Garland decided. Was he in a difficult situation? Yes. Was he in a situation he probably didn't want to be in? I think the answer is absolutely, because it is so politically charged. I think he's hoping basically to avoid those big political issues. But this one came into his lap, and he could not avoid it. And in the accompanying uh, news release from the Department of Justice, there are uh, several quotes here from the attorney general. And if you'll permit me, Jessica, I'll just read from them. Uh, it says, since my first day in office, I've promised Justice Department employees that together we would show the American people by word and deed that the department adheres to the rule of law, follows the facts and the law, and pursues equal justice under the law. Today's charges reflect the department's steadfast commitment to these principles. Jessica, how is this likely to be received, though? Um, you know, among those supporters of the former president who um, would look at uh, the Justice Department and say that is very much a Justice Department, in their view, that is not independent of the White House. I, I think that's so unfortunate and so true. And I think that there are there's a big percentage of people who will see Department of Justice that's now under a Democratic president who, you know, Mayor Garland obviously was appointed by President Biden, and they will see that he is now indicting one of former President Trump's former advisors. And they're going to see this as Democrat versus Republican. And I understand why that happens, but it's so dispiriting to our rule of law. And it's such a problem when our faith is so shaken that we cannot look to the Department of Justice and view it as independent. It, I think that's part of the reason why you saw this delay. The House voted a while ago to refer this um, for a criminal indictment. And the Department of Justice, I think, really looked over everything because they know that there are, is a percentage of the American public who will just see this as blue versus red as Democrat versus Republican. And I don't know at this point what, I mean, this is one of these huge questions for us. I don't know what you can do to prevent that. I mean, we can show the statute when it comes to criminal contempt. We can explain that Steve Bannon didn't show up. We can explain why Congress has this power. Um, but I think for so many things, we just view this through a partisan lens. Um, and finally, Jessica, before we let you go, do you think this in, uh, indictment could potentially incentivize other witnesses to go ahead and cooperate with the House Select Committee? Uh, absolutely, possibly. So it is important to remember that um, I think it was just yesterday there was a D.C. circuit that put an administrative stay on the Congressional Committee's request for documents from the White House. Now, a lot of the reason I bring that up is that there are other witnesses that I think are watching that case because President, former President Trump has claimed executive privilege around those documents, mm -hmm. even though he's the former president. And I believe that the oral arguments in that case are scheduled for November 30th. That could then be appealed to the Supreme Court. But people who are deciding whether or not to testify, I think they're going to look both at what happened today to Steve Bannon but also at that case and what the court says with respect to those, I think, very weak claims of executive privilege. 
All right, and um, we should mention as well, uh, with these two charges, each count of contempt of Congress carries a minimum of 30 days and a maximum of one year in jail, as well as a fine of $100 to $1,000. As we said earlier, no arraignment date yet uh, has been set. So, Jessica Levinson, thank you very much for your analysis on this developing story. We appreciate it. Thank you.